in the middle of our life's journey, hoping not to have the current life expectancy of a Burundi resident, I found myself in a row of brightly lit shelves, where I immediately found the digital tin soldering station and the desoldering set with cleaning sponge and cutters, which with the conscious, illusory certainty of making a bargain, I deposited on the roller of case number 666, lubricated by a heroic egg that had fallen on the field, while waiting for the barcode reader to turn them into an expensive and for now useless beep. In general to do electrical and electronic tin soldering correctly, it is important. Choose a soldering iron with the right power and temperature for the type of soldering you are doing. If the temperature is too high, you risk damaging electronic components, and if it is too low, the solder may not adhere properly. Check that the surfaces to be soldered are clean and free of oxide and other impurities, possibly to be cleaned with a deoxidizer, such as solder paste, also known as flux paste. Use a good quality tin wire, usually with a 60% tin alloy, with a flux core and with the right size. The diameter of the tin wire should be chosen according to the size of the electrical or electronic components to be soldered. The color should preferably be bright light gray, which is an indication of no surface oxidation and thus good alloy quality. Verify that the soldering iron tip is clean by removing any tin residue with the appropriate sponge. Heat the soldering iron for a few minutes before use to reach the right temperature, to be set if possible between 200 and 450 degrees, depending on the type of tin and the components to be soldered. Apply the tin wire to the soldering surface, possibly close to the soldering point heated with the soldering iron, without overdoing the amount of tin, which could create tin bridges between components. Do not breathe in the fumes, perhaps operating in an airy environment or even better using a fume extractor that is toxic and has no psychotropic effect, for those who are looking for it. Try not to move the electronic component while the tin is still molten so as not to compromise the compactness of the solder. Finally, check the result and make sure there are no short circuits or tin bridges. While to remove tin or desolder tinned electronic components there are several methods. Use a vacuum pump that creates a vacuum that sucks the molten tin out of the solder melted by the soldering iron. Use an electric tin desolder which consists of a heating tip and a vacuum pump. Use a desoldering braid, which is made from a braided thin copper braid that absorbs the molten tin when heated by a tin soldering iron after placing it on the solder you want to remove. Use a hot air soldering iron to melt the solder, remove the component, and then remove the tin with a desoldering braid or vacuum pump. Of course, the whole thing with experience will become easier, more accurate, and faster to do. As for the soldering station and all the other equipment from Parkside, distributed in Lidl discounters, used in this video, they prove to be suitable for small occasional DIY jobs, the soldering iron in particular has enough power to operate easily on electrical wire sections up to 2 mm, the build quality is in line with the price range and the whole thing can be taken into consideration by those who want to have everything they need to start soldering with tin in electrical and electronic fields spending a few tens of euros. Thank you for watching the video so far, I hope I have been helpful and pleasantly entertained you. If you haven't already, please share, comment, like, check out the other videos, offer a super thank you and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for the support. Bye bye.